Hey folks, I know I said the last episode of Northern Snakehead Truth Series would be the last episode. However, it occurs to me there's a useful function for what I'm going to call an epilogue episode after each one of these kind of series where I do a species profile and kind of deep dive into their invasive qualities or their qualities in general. So what am I going to use this epilogue episode for? A few things. One is going to be to continue to ask for your let's say, constructive criticism. <laughs> As I mean, the series was received very well, and I appreciate all the support that y'all have been sending me. The vast majority of people seem to have very much enjoyed and liked the series. But I mean, there are a few dissenting voices out there, and within those dissenting voices, there's definitely a few points that I've taken to heart that I, I think are valid critiques of what I did. And so let's get into a few of those. Now, here's the first thing. I'm going to use future epilogue series to discuss things like this, but especially to communicate my perspective and my position. That's probably the one regret that I have about the Northern Snakehead Truth series above anything else, is that in the final episode, I gave my perspective and my viewpoint. And it's not that I think that, I mean, I still hold the same viewpoint, but what I want to do in future series is keep the episodes themselves just the data so that you can make the decision for yourselves. And then within the epilogue episode, at that point is when I'll give you my perspective. So if you care about what, about what I have to say, or what I have to think about it, you can watch. And if not, you can just look at the data that I presented and make your own decisions. Now on that point, one item of what I consider to be invalid criticism was that I was presenting only one half of the argument. Now, at least partially invalid. Now, I consider it partially invalid, number one, because in the video description of every single video I did, I include links to all the source documents. That way you're not relying necessarily on my interpretation or John's interpretation. You can go back and look at that yourselves, make your own decision. Like, I guess the second point I would make is that we weren't providing just, some people took it as we were just providing John's perspective. That's, that's not accurate. Like These are the findings based on the 2018 Snakehead Symposium. That is experts from around the country, and to some degree, you know, some ex experts who were international guests. That's all of those studies. Okay, and go back, look at the video description. I'll include it in this one as well. For almost the entirety of that symposium, all those experts, all their presentations, almost the entirety of that is in video format online. Thanks very much to the Virginia chapter of the American Fishery Society for that absolute gem. I love it. But that's the one point I want to make is that it was not an echo chamber. Those were the scientific results thus far. Now, I said in the last episode, in episode six, that I'd be having more guests on to provide other viewpoints and actually cover other species. And both of those are true, but maybe I should have expounded on it. There are other fisheries biologists and experts who advocate taking a very strong line in terms of invasive species. There's a good argument to be made for that. Don't get me wrong. There's a very good argument to be made that we should be very cautious about snakehead because it takes, in some cases, a very long time for the impacts to fully manifest. So to that end, I am in communications. I don't want to drop any names just in case anything goes wrong, but I am in communications with other fisheries biologists in the field who would probably want to provide outlook or guidance on the topic of northern snakehead. So insofar as people want to participate, I'm more than happy to have them on. More information, the better when it comes to us being able to make decisions. Another point I want to make, and I think I was pretty good about this. I mean, you can go back and fact check me, but within each series, even when I would say that there's no evidence thus far to conclude that snakehead have invasive qualities, meaning economic, biological, ecological harm, I was very careful, as far as my memory <laughs> recollects, in saying thus far. Now, maybe I should have emphasized it in some way a little bit stronger, because new evidence can come out that will potentially demonstrate invasive impact on behalf of northern snakehead, because different river systems, different lakes, different waters in general, have different species and different dynamics, different characteristics. Right? When you change the variables, the results will change, at least to some degree. So this is another point I want to drive home thus far. I'm not encouraging the, <laughs> the bucket biology 
and dispersion of the species by people who have taken it to mean that there's no risk associated with the species. It's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that thus far, from the evidence and studies thus far, invasive impact has yet to be demonstrated. But that could change, so exercise caution, obey the law. All right? <laughs> make that point clear. And I think the last point that I'll make here is, again, more of a request than it is a point. If you take issue with how I've done something in the video, if you have questions, hit me up. You know, uh, my preferred probably method of contact would be to drop me a message at Cambo Trout on Facebook. Again, link is in the description here. So if there's a way that you think I could present the data more objectively or something along those lines, just any general critiques about the video, hit me up, let me know. You know, I'm more than willing to have the conversation. Now, respect is a two-way street. You know, if you come to me in a certain way, then, you know, it's probably not going to be a very productive conversation. But if you come to me respectfully and say, hey, you know, I think maybe you could do this better, or I think you might have done a disservice to the information in this way, by all means, hit me up. All right. I want to make sure that I'm providing the best information and the best product possible to you. Essentially, what this boils down to is providing something akin to a service. A lot of excellent work is being done by fisheries biologists on our behalf. But unfortunately, we're not usually privy to it. We're not usually aware. Not too many fishermen are out there reading the scientific studies or the symposia. And through the different connections that I have and my own personal interest, that's something that I do. So if I can share that with you to help inform you, I mean, just how to be a better fisherman or how to be a better steward of the environment, those are two huge reasons why I operate this channel. And I mean, I guess the two primary reasons are to show people different ways to get into the outdoors and enjoy it and give them the information they need to be responsible and taking care of it as we enjoy it. So I think I'll stop right there. Uh, if y'all have any questions or comments, you let me know. And uh, I guess stay tuned for further episodes. So please like, share, and subscribe. Y'all have a good one.